there. I'm slowly beginning to understand how all of these things fit together. Well, welcome back to Code Therapy. Uh, code Therapy, as I will unceasingly explain, is a therapy for me. It helps me relax after a long, hard day um, saving the internet freedoms. Uh, I, uh, I I find code kind of kind of calming, and I've noticed Bob Ross like that watching other people code is sort of calming because it's all of the thought process without actually having to puzzle out the solutions or stress about the consequences. So um, uh, I hope you enjoy listening to this as much as I enjoy saying the words that come out of my mouth. All right. So the story so far. Once again, I also have to explain this in detail. And while talking to one of my uh, loyal viewers, he did explain that it is episode three and he's still not entirely sure what Duel N Back is. So we're building this game. It's called Duel N Back. The N stands for any number, like N plus one. But the Duel stands for both audio and visual memory. And the Back stands for you have to remember things that are back in time. Uh, I have a little demonstration of this over here, which I snuck from Wikipedia, but it's Creative Commons, so that's okay. Um, so this is what our game should eventually look like. Um, a little blob appears in one of these nine grid positions. And what you have to do at a key moment is when you see one, you have to go, what was the thing that was like two steps back? Was that in the same place? And if it is, you have to hammer on the position match. And uh, what you don't see here is that there's a little voice going, S, S, P, P, or whatever. And if you hear the person saying that, and you remember that two steps back, they said the same letter, in dual two back, that's when you hammer on the L audio match. And basically, um, it's a way of uh, training yourself to uh, expand or, or, or exercise, at the very least, your working memory. Uh, and lots of scientists say it's, uh, it's, it's good for permanently kind of improving your uh, fluid intelligence, I believe is the term. If you want to know more about dual in back, perhaps slightly more than anyone would ever want to know about Joel M. Back, do go to gwern.net. Gwern is, I think, I think when they build a set of statues to the great early internet personalities um, like uh, Kibo and uh, Mike Godwin and Boxy, I think there will be a small altar to Gwern. Gwern um, does this brilliant website that uh, uh, is a mixture of sort of uh, 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 Bitcoin and dark net explorations and um, uh, and uh, strange self-experimentation. And one of the things that he's been experimenting on himself is uh, using dual end back to uh, improve his uh, his working memory and his intelligence. But um, if, if it's if it's not working, he, he started from a pretty good baseline because check this out this is this is all of his paper this must be doing your head in trying to read this so quickly unless you've been playing dual in back for the last 10 years in which case this is just how fast you process information um, but but basically what you can see here is that he's collected together all the scientific papers on dual in back and comes to exactly the kind of um, uh, imprecise but ambiguous conclusions that doing a meta-analysis of any set of scientific papers appears to uh, provide you with. But anyway, check that out. That's gwern.net, DNB, percent 20 FAQ, because you probably won't be able to type that directly in. And if I remember, I will put uh, links to all of this stuff um, uh, at the end of the session. Something else that I've been, I've been pretty bad at doing. Um, I'm just going to check to see whether, yeah, we seem to be live. People can hear me, right? You guys can hear me. You folks can hear me, right? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes, right? Either that or you, you, you 
can't see the chat. All right, let's get back to it. So here is where we're at. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see all of this code, I'll just leave this up so you can lovingly copy down the um, GitHub address. That's where it's all sitting. Um, so this is uh, our implementation so far of dual MBAC. And it's written in a, hold on, standby earthquake so I can see the screen. There we go. Um, it's written in M, which is a crazy, funky functional language. And uh, uh, gosh, where to start with Elm? It's magical qualities is that it compiles to JavaScript. So it's good for doing uh, one page web apps. Um, it's functional and immutable, which means that you write it slightly differently from your traditional JavaScript script imperative language. Although I have to say, um, it's got less funky unless I'm having to break my own head to try and understand this uh, in the last few months. Uh, it was originally based on um, uh, Evan, <coughs> I can't remember pronounce his surname, uh, PhD thesis. But he's very good at bringing that down to earth. And the last version of Elm, 0.17, I actually could understand, which is why I was so excited to play around with it. Before that, it was like a bunch of like you piped signals into folds and then you 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 combine time and space using the transparent integrity and the neutron flow. Um, whereas this, it's a pretty good easy structure. What you have here is you have various elements of a program you initialize it you set up something that will display the view of it you update the model which is the sort of uh uh all of the state of the program like everything that might possibly change and you would think to stuff in a variable is stuffed into uh into this thing uh where is it uh bu -bu 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 -bu. here we go and uh state of the program using this update function. And then you can also subscribe to external things coming in at the program using the subscription function. And this is all we have right now. We, you join us at the very early um, uh, venture capital seed capital stage of my uh, multi-million pound dual MBAC program. The, uh, uh, these are all the different functions. Each of these functions that we're writing always returns the same value given that the input that you give it. So that's the, the nature of being um, pure or mutable or without side effects. Um, and that's really good for testing and thinking about how it works because changing something in one part of the program is not going to change the functionality of something else. Um, it does mean though that anytime you want to have something come in and change this, which is usually um, ex uh, um, input or, or maybe output, but definitely input stuff coming into the program. You uh, implement that as, as, as signals coming into the program, as, as, as commands, I think they're called now, uh, or messages, that's right. So uh, in the case of um, uh, the update, we have a bunch of messages and we uh, change the model based on those messages. And if you want to have something like, for instance, a random number generator, which could be a different number every time, you don't have a random number generating function. You, um, you tell the entire system to generate a signal that will come back into the program carrying this, ma this random number. So it's not a function so much as a, a message from the outside world. And if, um, if you think that sounds confusing, you should have seen it before they made it a lot more, a lot more rational, human sounding. All right, so we've, we've seen what there is to see. Um, I have a little mini program running up here that, that spots and compiles the code that we've written. And, um, hopefully shows it up here. And this is how far we've got. This is our um, grid that's supposed to match this grid. And we've got as far as, as 
making that show something. So I think the next step to do is 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 actually just a bit of um, internal game functionality. Oh, Liz, Liz, can you can you not hear sound? Okay. Oh no, that's always so frustrating. Hold on. Thank you for telling me, Liz. Um, let me go and check. That's the second time that's happened. Well, I'm getting sound coming out here. Let me, um, let me play around with this. Um, just bear with me a little bit. Um, I will be back in one moment. alarm everything seems to be working okay all right so let's go back to checking this out so what I said was um, we're going to uh, I'll put the first part of some functionality here which is doo -doo -doo, actually telling us when we should expect at least um, someone to mash on the key that says that something two cards back was the same so I have nothing up my sleeve here. I really am thinking this up as I go along, but I imagine uh, position the same. And then we can take the model and also, uh, well, I'm tempting, tempted to call it N, but that's probably in back, why don't we call it in back? So what we're gonna do is look into that uh, array, that list and um, look back in time. So the first one we want is, that h equals head model deck, just on the deck. So that's going to return a uh, maybe value. I don't know actually how to do comments. Later. And then it should be, I wonder what the, still, um, still getting the hang of what the various commands are. This is probably going to be so. Member, member, maybe. Oh no, that's telling you. Uh, so we want to drop. If it's two back, we want to drop the in back number, and then take the head of that. So this is. Uh, 
this is drop list drop in back. So we're dropping this many of um, the model deck. And then we're going to take the head of that. So, so now we have two maybe values, which I think we can we can compare. Um, I think it's okay to compare. Huh. Desperately, desperately. Oh my goodness! All right, so. Oh, I'm not entirely comfortable that that works whenever something compiles in uh, in Elm or any other functional programming language. You have this moment of what it compiled. Does that mean it's actually all right? So let's just stick in a thing uh, if in position the same. Seems like that's not a great. Maybe. I'm so bad with variable names, but we can try it. Text. And back. I've been thinking about how to make my millions with dual and back, and I've decided to make it like a really funky Snapchat, just like kind of watch out for your jellies kind of um, a casual game. And I also thought, how about duel in back, right? So like dueling, we'd have two people competing to remember as many things as possible. Yeah, I think it could be the next big thing. Anyway, um, so what we should encourage people to do is to shout in back when they, uh, uh, when they, they successfully <laughs> choose the, the right element. Anyway, that's, that's part of the marketing campaign rather than um, rather than the basic functionality here. Oh, sh sugar. I broke it. Why did I break it? Just be, what, where, where did I do that? Oh, probably, probably, did I not have square brackets? No. I ran into a problem here. Just me. Let me see where just me is. What? Huh? Maybe this didn't work. Maybe maybe the reason it didn't work is it didn't even know that I typed this. Let's try it again. No. This works. How did I change something here by mistake? It looks like it. This is one of the things I sort of love about um Vim's infinite undo and the fact that you could sort of go up and down it just by bouncing on these keys is that you do sometimes maybe something is up. All right, so. This is acceptable to the compiler. So let's just not go anywhere, show card or not. Let's do text if is position the same model two, because we're playing dual and back, then text. No back. Okay, that's what I don't like about Vim. Does it spot my escape key? Oh my goodness, what's it doing? Okay, it's it's it is at least complaining in what we imagine is the right place. Second element has this time, which should be the but the, but the third is to, they should be the same.
that's nice. Telling me I'm not using time. Uh, second element. Oh, I see. I thought I was being clever by putting these square brackets as I'd subconsciously noticed. square brackets in the previous thing. But in fact, that was just because it was inside that button. My kill the keyboarding skills aren't great at the moment. I've got it's because I'm keeping this on my lap. It's not where I used to my being. Okay, got cocky. Why is it? Ah, okay. No back. So now we can actually into play at a very slow rate uh, dual in back. So everybody we need to remember this position and then the next position. So no back. 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 It's getting a bit frustrating now. No back. No back. Right in back because it went red over to here and then back again, right? So that is literally when we're supposed to hit that key. So I think we're, we're almost ready. I mean, I'm not gonna do it. There's, there's time pressure in the, the, the real one, but um, uh, in this case, we can, we can just make it a slow procedural and back. Alrighty. Hey, Joshua, it's good to see you again. We've gone, we've come a long way. Um, we now have MBAC um, doing something. Look at this. So it's showing us the little, the little block. And we've also just put in some logic to tell us when this card is in the same place as it was two steps away. Uh, like. Uh, it's a long run. Wow, it's a really long run. Is there something wrong with it? No, I think it's just... There we go. So it, it did three in a row in this position, and therefore it meant... You're, you're making a C-sharp game library called Mint. Nice name. Good name for a, a game library. That's sort of cool. C sharp is pretty. It's a pretty nice language. Um, the guy who sort of really started C sharp at Microsoft was one of the key people in a language programming language from the ancient times called Turbo Pascal. And the cool thing about Turbo Pascal was it was the first real compiler uh, that you could. First of all, it was a compiler for Pascal, which no one had ever heard of. But it was so quick that you could just type a bit of Pascal on the old com computer and it would like compile it instantly. People were not used to that. People were used to typing a thing and then it grinding forever and compiling the program. So it encouraged people to, um, uh, to sort of fiddle with the language like, like we're doing now actually, um, to just tweak things and then try them out again. People really hadn't been able to do that in a, a, a serious programming language. Um, um, before then, uh, they'd really had to, the only things that really let you do that was um, interpreted languages like basic and um, which sort of interpreted them as they went like Python or Perl or um, Ruby. And uh, spot back matches, say back matches. 
can't remember his name. What is his name? Yeah, you were talking about the simple um, uh, something media language. Okay, Good. I think we've committed that. Jobs. All right, let us see if we can. that we need. Let's see, we're going to put all of this in a div. A div is going to have two buttons, one of which is actually one button for, for, for at this point. Um, so we'll say visual and back match. So this is a message that we're going to send out when some clicks on this here button. Button takes another thing here. So. There we go, much is up there. Oh, that's because we, we never defined what visual back is. It's going to be a message. So this is another message we're going to have. Um, what is it? Simple, fast multimedia language library. Nice. Actually, I'm just going to. You've distracted me now, Joshua. I'm going to have to find out more about it. Simple, fast, multi. Library. Oh, it's cross platform as well. Nice. Detail. Ooh, it's a rust. Oh, this does look good. Network sound, C++, hobbyist game developers. Compared to older libraries, you see, I did know about SDL. User base is relatively small, but growing. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna favor that. Do I star it or do I watch it? I guess I star it. Huh. Interesting. All right. On the other side, I'm gonna look up Turbo Pascal, so it's not Anders. Anders Heich, Heich, but Why does everybody I admire have impronounceable surnames? Wow. Um. And yeah, he was the lead architect of C Sharp. Uh, we go turbo pascal kevin hogan studied engineering the nascom microcomputer holy cow look at that that looks like something that fell off the back of the space shuttle I totally remember the nascom so the original nascom only had a hexadecimal keypad <laughs> and a seven segment display so basically the the thing buried underneath this originally looked like a calculator and people just kept on adding things to it until it, it became something more serious looking so that's how you that's how you expand a computer british cellophane you see that okay okay enough distraction um except my family used to come from kind of okay okay to dip on it Let's return back. So I think we were adding a visual and back match. Okay, it's telling us we have to add a branch to cover this 
here. Absolutely right. But I think what we're just going to do here is just return nothing for now. Hey, you know what? We might as well go the whole way. Let's say if is position the same model two. Return. Um, okay, let's add something else to the model. Hmm. Might as well just make it school. Okay, now we use this slightly strange format for changing the value of model. We're not remember we're not changing the model. We're um, returning a uh, oops. Returning a, uh, a, a a changed vers version of the model. So. Sorry, the direction scroll down to the bottom. Tell me what you think. Oh. Okay, I'm up for a, a distraction. Oh wait, that's loading in the wrong screen. It's loading on my secret screen. That's off. Okay, I can replace the NASCAM. This is a pretty good tutorial. I like the little, I like the little boxes. This is nice. This is nice. Are you, is this your tutorial or are you just like, this is how easy it is to get SFML working? interested in that. One of the other languages that I want to play around with is uh, Rust. And the fact that that has bindings to Rust is very tempting to me. Okay, so now we say score equals score plus one. I do not know if that's the right syntax. Going to find out now. No. No, I missed a bracket. Then else model command no. Probably supposed to drop. Type annotation is saying that, but I am inferring the definition has that. Uh, just because I'm not sure of the syntax here. It's the code's clean. I like it. Oh, right, right, right. Actually, this isn't a problem here. This is a problem down here because now we have to set up. Score equals zero here. Notice how the error messages are helping us as we 
put in a tiny change into the program, how the error messages are like leading us to where other changes have to go pass, go be made. Okay, am I back? Excellent. Okay, slowly getting better at this. I don't know why it suddenly crashes like that, but I don't like it. Okay, you see me copying my file over. Um. Oh, we seem to be back. <laughs> I don't know why it uh, <laughs> it needs to flicker around like that this video profile so okay. okay no more distractions okay so let's just I think we're gonna just finish get this into a working state and then um, call it a night okay so all right, now we actually have to play the game, huh? Oh, well, we need to show a score if we're going to play the game. to a string. <laughs> so, so this is what happens when you, um, you're just starting a programming language. You're just like, I, I don't even know where to begin. Two string is a pretty good guess. Okay, so I was right. So two string. Model score. Dink. Maybe you forgot some parentheses, or maybe a comma. Or maybe a plus plus to put these two things together. Wait, where did to string go? fails stick everything in parentheses good all right now we actually have to play this game okay I'm interested in why it's not actually that um, that frequent. Oh, my 
this one. Oh, it could be one. No. I wonder if the actual um, chances in the games we that I played of this aren't actually that random. Like they do actually stick in something, which is that might be the case. Did I just miss one? Damn it! <laughs> Great, I'm going to have to get good at this game to even test it, so. We do have to do visual match now. No. I think we should penalize people who say visual match when there isn't a visual match. Model. I also have to work out the scoring system. But this will at least let us check the. Ah! Why the sad face, compiler? Okay. It's interesting, you need a space between the minus and the one. Okay. Visual match. No, you're totally wrong. Okay. New cards. No. 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 Is that one? No. Oh, you know what? We can cheat because it's gonna tell us when there's a when there's a match. Before we, oh, <laughs> I just have to click the button at the right time. Okay. Something, something beautifully hypnotic about these sort of clicky things. It's like if you've ever, there we go. Oh yeah, I think that might have been a match. Yes. All right. Well, the logic kind of works. That's great. That's really good. Huh. So I think that the next part of this, and which we'll do tomorrow, is um, get a bit of timing behind this. Like we'll, we'll have the new cards come up every few seconds. And I think the only part of this that, that, that that's gonna raise a problem for is what happens when you you miss a dual end back because I think there's some penalty for that. Let's just just to freshen our minds before we go. Um, if we come back to this tomorrow. Um, find out what the the timing. I'm um, sorry, the scoring is a bit. This is where I find out the scoring is actually a secret proprietary bit of information. Um, I bet Gwern knows. I bet Gwern. Can't be bothered to read all of that. Dual impact scoring. Look at these people have done it for like hundreds of days. Do do. 20 trials per session, three seconds per trial. It's pretty hardcore. What? How do you score three strikes model? Okay. Okay, this just determines when it upgrades you to a, a, a different and back level. But do we Right, 
check this out. It's like two different scoring systems. Non matches with no inputs are counted as correct. Well, that's not right. Not pressing any key during a session will give you a score of 72%. Huh. Ah, look, the original study places limits on the randomness of the responses. Four matches, four auditory matches, and two simultaneously. So what do you guys do? What is the... and back arithmetic and back holy cow this is like a whole world of hardcore and backism do i want to just copy what brain workshop does well maybe maybe we will start with yegi mode who was the original um uh author of the paper and then work from that All right, my brain is full. Dual arithmetic and back. Triple arithmetic and back. Triple super deformed arithmetic and back. Crab back. Multi stim mode. My hat is off to you, Brain Workshop. This is this is more open source software. So if you wanted to, if we do want to see how it works, then we could just take a look at it. Although I do want to like you know carve out my. Uh, my own my own area with like dual end back with two people fighting that would be good but I think we have something here we've certainly progressed uh, I'm not even sure if I want to commit this but it's always good to commit something Close. Going back. Do I program for a job? Have you gone? Nope. Um, I don't actually. I work for an organization called the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, it. Uh, um, I don't do many pro much programming there, although we have a bunch of people who do. Um, they wrote a plugin called. Drum roll, privacy badger, which is pretty awesome. Which blocks spying ads and invisible trackers. We're a non-profit um, and HTTPS everywhere. We've been trying to get the world to um, turn on encryption. Uh, we've been going 30 years and well, 25 years, and uh, uh, we're uh, we're uh, an advocacy organization. You want a programming job? So one of the things that we do at EFF is uh, if you ever get in trouble and you're a programmer, um, then uh, we're the people to call because we're um, free lawyers and we fight for the rights of people to um, do what they want with their computers without interference with government or corporations. Um, so that's what I do during the day. It's kind of an awesome job actually. Okay, so when you get your programming job, keep doing the right thing. Like if somebody asks you to write a program to spy on someone, don't write it. And if, uh, if you see someone else um, being targeted or threatened for the coding that they're writing, then just email info at EFF.org. We fight stuff like... Um, fight against censorship. Right now I'm sort of very interested in the kind of surveillance and censorship that goes on in schools because I think if people teach you that surveillance is okay and the censorship is okay in schools then you get that in your head and it's a lot easier to fight those things when they're out in the real world. Not that school is in the real world although they'll try and convince you that it isn't or except when 
they want to make some point, I'll tell you that it is. Okay, uh, I was in the middle of consigning this to the confines of Git. So what have we changed here? Let's, let's just um, didn't change that much, but we can we can say a primitive scoring system. I'm probably committing this stuff um, at slightly too granular a form, but I'm I'm a pretty I'm a pretty slow programmer, and also it's nice to always keep a track of of what you've done so far. All right, I think that's it for tonight. Have an awesome time, everybody, and um, keep fighting the good fight. I'll see you next time. Bye. Ah, ah.